So we have some breaking news. Apparently, Delegate Stacy Plaskett, who is the representative from the Virgin Islands, you might remember her participating in that hearing about the Twitter files that friend of the show Michael Schellenberger and Matt Taibbi uh, participated in. Well, guess what? She is threatening Matt Taibbi with potential jail time due to a perjury charge. This is according to Lee Fong, who's working now with Matt Taibbi, and we also had on the show recently. He has a copy of this letter from Plaskett it to Taibi that says, uh, it says a lot of those things, but under the, uh, one of the things it says is under the federal perjury statute, providing false information is punishable by up to five years imprisonment. So she is hitting out at Taibi uh, following this, you know, the, we've covered all the aspects of this, but Mehdi Hassan accused Taibi of getting some fundamental things wrong in the Twitter files. Taibi acknowledged a couple errors, and then Mehdi Hassan claimed victory and said, there's nothing to see here. The, the whole intellectual undergirding of the Twitter files has been exposed as, you know, the house of cards and has really claimed victory. Um, Lee Fong has done some, some very good follow-up reporting showing that, yes, while those errors were acknowledged, they do not totally undercut the thing, particularly this error, this confusion in, in one of the tweets between two different groups, CISA, which is a, a federal uh, it is a government organization that was involved, and then CIS, which is a nonprofit. And in one place, uh, Taibi confused the two, uh, but it does not change. They, both of them, both of these groups, were involved in relaying information to Twitter having to do with content moderation. So the idea that because in, in one place he identified it as the government group instead of the non-government group, it takes the whole thing down, makes no sense whatsoever. But it, you know, in fairness to the Hassan's perspective, let's play that uh, that clip uh, where uh, where Taibi, the clip in question where Taibi speaks before Congress. And what we see in the Twitter files is that Twitter executives did not distinguish between DHS or CISA and this group EIP. For instance, we would see a communication that said, um, from CISA escalated by EIP. So they were essentially identical in the eyes of the company. Uh, EIP, in, in, by its own data, and this is in reference to what, what you brought up, Mr. Congressman, um, according to their own data, they significantly uh, targeted more dis what they call disinformation on the right than on the left um, by a factor, I think, of, uh, of about 10 to 1. Uh, so, and I, and I say that it's not a Republican at all. It's just a fact of what we're looking at. Um, so, yes, we, the, we have come to the, to the realization that this bright line that we imagine that exists between, say, the FBI or the DHS or the GEC and these private companies is, is illusory, and that it, what's more important is this constellation of kind of quasi-private organizations that do this work. So, so that that ultimate point that there is a constant constellation of quasi-government groups working together and that that produced the chilling effect of the Twitter censorship. That is, that is still a robust finding based on Twitter files reporting. Taibbi did confuse those two organizations in one of his tweets about it. It's and clearly not perjury anyway, well, even if he is confused there, because it was a mistake and you have to, he, it was not a willful effort to deceive. But the overall point does stand. Yeah, so uh, of course, on Medi's show, Medi raised a bunch of inconsistencies or what he thought were errors, um, some of which Matt Taibbi admitted to, including this one, although Lee's follow up has made the argument that it wasn't really so much, a, some, such, as much of a, a mistake as. Um, Matt conceded on the show. Regardless, in this letter, two things are interesting. One is that Plaskett doesn't actually make an effort to explain the mistake. She quotes Matt's admission that it was a mistake as, you know, uh, to, to, to stand for the proposition that it was wrong, and then goes on to say, as you mentioned, that knowingly providing material false information to this committee or subcommittee is a crime. Of course, if it is a mistake, then it's not knowingly providing false information. 
And all that Matt conceded was that he was in an error, not that he was intentionally trying to mislead the committee. So with all of that in mind, it seems very clear that this kind of a letter is an effort to threaten and coerce and punish Taibbi for giving testimony that was inconvenient to the Democratic Party. And that's a real problem, and it's exactly what Li Fang has been warning of this whole time, and while he, why he's treated the characterization of Matt's remarks during that congressional hearing so seriously, um, saying that it's not, it's, it's not okay, this isn't just like a tit for tat, accusing someone of lying in a casual way or even making a mistake in a casual way. But there could be really substantive consequences here, including jail time. And this letter seems to confirm that Lee's feelings about this weren't just paranoia, but, but rooted in a real justifiable concern. Yeah, I, I mean, this, this letter from Plaskett is truly incredible. So l let me read a little bit more of it. So, Plaskett um, quotes the, the, the statement that we just played for you, a, tra a transcript of it that, that uh, Taibbi made, and then says, the above statement now seems to be contradicted by your own admission. On April 6, 2023, you appeared on the Mehdi Hassan show. During that interview, Mr. Hassan pointed out that your tweet had added, uh, had, had flipped the two acronyms. Um, when presented with this misinformation, you acknowledged you had made an error by intentionally altering the acronym CIS, and you subsequently deleted your erroneous tweet. Um, <laughs> he he did not acknowledge intentionally altering the acronym. She is she's well, implying she, malicious. He which, thought it was referring to right. the other organization. So he he did a where you fix. Sometimes if someone says it gives a quote to you as a journalist, and they say they they there's miss an error. there's a like a like a misspeaking thing, you fix it so that it looks right and you, and you put that in brackets, which is what he did. It, it, it's not an intentional effort to deceive. Right, the intentionality is making the edit, not right. that, but because he thought that he was correcting something that was in fact an error, not because he thought right. he was intentionally misleading. Which does not open you up to perjury, as she then goes well, on to suggest. Well, one would like to think, <laughs> but you know, we're living in this world where everyone seems to think that weaponizing the government in various ways is justified if, you know, that the ends mm -hmm. justify the means. You have an investigation into Hunter Biden's tax information, which may or may not be based in politics and may or may not be based in a real, a real kind of fraud here. You have the investigation into Donald Trump's payment to Stormy Daniels on whether there's a business record violation in New York, which many people perceive to be a political persecution. Uh, you have, you know, Democrats really screwing the pooch in California with Dianne Feinstein and not being able to appoint any judges because she's on a committee that she's not well enough to show up for, and Republicans saying that they're not going to play ball and they're going to obstruct that, but, which I think is all fair play. I'm not criticizing yeah, any yeah, of yeah. that. The point that I'm making is that everything that's going on in American politics is gamesmanship. It's posturing. It's I'm going to make woke Disney the bet noir of the Republican Party. And what we're not talking about in the middle of all of this is that 15 million people were just kicked off of Medicaid. We're not talking about inflation. We're not talking about cost of living. We're not talking about the pyramid scheme that is the housing market and the myth that we're supposed to be able to grow our individual wealth through this scheme that an entire generations now after Gen X are completely shut out of for the large part. And it's really frustrating, and there's no wonder there's such a, lo a loss of faith and confidence in politics and people who are looking to outsiders like RFK Jr. It's no wonder some people think the federal government is weaponized against them. I mean, <laughs> that was the name of the committee hearing. It was a, it was a committee hearing about the weaponization of the federal government. Yep. And, and she's Stacey Plaskett <laughs> is trying to disprove that the federal government is being weaponized by yep. sending a letter threatening five years jail time for misspeaking at a hearing about that yeah. very subject. That is incredible. That's some boldness from this so-called member of Congress. I say so-called because she's a delegate, not a representative. More rising right after this.